A nation's history is known through the stories that are told about it. At first, these stories were told orally. As time went on, these stories were written down and eventually books were published. But at the turn of the 20th century, a new medium of communication was created. Film. Film was different from earlier modes of storytelling, not only because it used both sounds and moving images, but because it had the capacity to seem so real. Directors could lead the audience into the direction they wanted more strongly than this could be done in the past. One of these directors was John Ford. Ford is often praised as being one of America's greatest filmmakers. Two of his movies hold spots on the American Film Institute's Top 10 Westerns. The number 9 spot for Stagecoach, and the number 1 spot for The Searchers. He was born in Maine in 1894 as John Feeney. In the 19-teens, he headed to California to act, and changed his last name to Ford. Soon after this, he moved behind the camera and began directing. Over his lifetime, he directed 145 movies. Many of these were westerns. He died in 1973. In this video, I will explore how John Ford was able to influence the way Americans view their history. Of course, Ford wasn't the only filmmaker shaping our understanding of history. But he is one of the most prominent and is at least a good representative of the mid 20th century western director. There are many aspects of our historical view that were shaped by films, but I will explore how the individual in Ford's movies affect how we view America and the American individual. As Professor Robert Burgoyne said, in the 20th century U.S., the narrative forms that have modeled national identity profoundly are arguably the Western and the war film. The majority of John Ford's westerns deal with the 19th century and the expanding frontier, creating a sense of openness. His westerns were set in different locations, but he often filmed in Utah's Monument Valley because it was so vast and remote. Ford made a virtue of his characters who ventured out into the west to start a new home out of the emptiness of the land. To him, it was virtuous for these adventurers to be able and willing to live outside of civilization. This American virtue is seen in the past when the colonists crossed the sea to come to America, and in the present as we move towards the frontiers of space. In addition to the pioneer spirit, Ford focuses on the strengths and weaknesses of his characters. A central part of his stories are that the protagonists are men and women who are strong and bound by a code of honor, duty, and dignity. The villains do not live by this code, and therefore the protagonists might throw themselves in front of the villains and stop them. What makes the good characters strong is that they will not stop until that job is complete. Well, why don't you say it? Beaten, you know it. No. Our turning back don't mean nothing. Not in the long run. If she's alive, she's safe. For a while, they'll keep her to raise as one of their own until, until she's of an age to... Do you think maybe there's a chance we still might find her? Engine will chase a thing till he thinks he's chased it enough. And he quits. Same way when he runs. Seems like he never learns there's such a thing as a critter or just keep coming on. So we'll find him in the end, I promise you. We'll find him. Just as sure as the turning of the earth. In my darling Clementine, Wyatt Earp's way of taking down the villain at any cost was to become the Marshal of Tombstone until he could avenge his brother's death. Self a job. Cow punching? Marshal. Marshal him? In Tombstone? <laughs> well, good luck to you, Mr. Earp. Wyatt Earp. Before he came in, no one had tried to take this job because they were too afraid. It took the bravery of a hero to risk his life and clean up the corrupt town. What made Ford different from many other directors of that time was that he showed the dark side of the protagonist. For example, in the movie The Searchers, the protagonist Ethan Edwards 
is in many ways a good person and does heroic actions, but he is driven by racism. I could mistake you for a half-breed. Um, not quite. I'm eighth Cherokee and the rest is Welsh and English. At least that's what they tell me. Grown some. It was Ethan found you, squalling under a sage clump after your folks had been massacred. It just happened to be me. No need to make more of it. The generation that watched these films went through the Cold War era, a time when the U.S. marched into Korea and Vietnam like a marshal coming in to clean up a town. Many believed that this was our honorable duty, while others believed our habit of entering wars and not backing out was America's dark side. In Ford's films, the hero is often reluctant to use violence, but will if necessary. It often is necessary because of the violence surrounded in the mythic West. You better start packing a handgun. A gun? I, I don't want a gun. I don't want a gun. I don't want to kill him. I want to put him in jail. Oh. Well, I know those law books mean a lot to you, but not out here. Out here, a man settles his own problems. No, but do you, do you know what you're saying to me? You know, you're, you're saying just exactly what Liberty Valance said. What kind of a community have I come to? You all seem to know about this fellow Liberty Valance. He's a no-good, gun-packing, murdering thief. But the only advice you can give to me is to carry a gun. In the man who shot Liberty Valance, Ransom stuttered, desperately tries to find a way to fight Liberty Valance with the law instead of using violence. But in the end, he is forced to enter a gun duel. These same characteristics can be seen in American history. There have been several occasions in which America has attempted to avoid war by either remaining neutral or using diplomacy. But in the end, go to war. John Ford's films also depict an image of home and how one can be carved out of the landscape, for it also showed the outsider and their inability to call a place home. There is conflict here, however, because the purpose of the pioneer spirit was to bring civilization. For many of the heroes, this was hard to do because the reason they left the East was that they were unable to function in a permanent home. They often ended up being forced to move on. At the end of The Searchers, Ethan Edwards stays outside while the rest of the family goes inside their home. He knows he'll find, but where, oh Lord, Lord, where? Right away, right away, right away. This is often how we view the spirit of America as well. Throughout history, America has expanded the land it owns, yet we are never content with what we have and end up continuing to occupy more and more land. Give us a chill. We better get along on our way. Over time, our national identity has become one of the cowboy riding out to battle, the marshal protecting justice and the never-stopping soldier. The characters in Ford's films don't just represent the American individual, they represent America itself. Everybody down, low bridge, for we're coming to a town. And you'll always know your neighbor, and you'll always know your pal, if you've ever navigated on the Erie Canal. Another round for 